Well, that's kind of how it goes, man. All right, all right, all right. So, the best first round series has now come to an end. The Clippers have taken down the Dallas Mavericks, and they will be advancing to the second round to take on the number one seeded Utah Jazz. That should be a great matchup, and Clippers, prepare yourself because um, that series should be just as difficult, if not more difficult, than this series because the Jazz are top five in defensive rating and three-point shooting, so good luck with that. Uh, we're mostly going to focus on the Dallas Mavericks here, but... I do have to shout out six players from the Clippers. Now, this was an, an entire team effort to win this, but these six players, got to give them their credit. Kawhi Leonard with 28 points, leading all scorers. He almost had a, a triple-double. He was 28, 10, and 9. He was one assist short from a triple-double. Paul George pitching in with 22 points. I was disappointed in him in the first quarter because he didn't really look for a shot. He had zero points in the first in the first quarter, but that second quarter was his best quarter of the game and throughout the second half he did his things occasionally so yeah Kawhi Leonard 28 points Paul George 22 points Marcus Morris with 23 points man was hitting clutch threes in the fourth Reggie Jackson with 15 points man was doing his thing and shout out to Terrence man he had 13 points but he brought the intensity he was doing his thing also Luke Kennard showed up pitched in with 11 points uh overall this team as a whole came together and played this is the Clippers team we're talking about. We got to say it, man. In the Western Conference, this is the most talented team that's left. You can argue they're the most talented team in the entire West Conference. So they had to find a way to get out of the series and make it to the next round. Because you can argue this team can win the championship. With the talent they have, if they play the way they play tonight, they should be in the finals. No question. So, yeah, they showed up. And you got to be proud of them, man. Honestly, I didn't think they were going to get out of the series. Based on what they've shown us, I did not think they were going to survive this. Being down 0-2 in a series, for them to come back, and then the way they played in Game 5, I did not think they were going to survive this, get to Game 7, and play the way they did. But they all must have sensed the moment. Kawhi Leonard sensed the moment in Game 6, and now it seems like all the players sensed the moment today. With the other LA team getting eliminated, you guys could arguably be the best team in the Western Conference. You have a clear pathway to get to the finals. And if you play the way you play tonight, you should be there. So they all sensed the moment and they played fantastic today. So great all around, uh, all around win for the uh, Clippers. They did what many of us did not expect them to do. A lot of us were looking at this game and thinking, ah, they might blow this. It was a crazy series because nobody won a home game. First six games, nobody won a home game. So we, did you put your trust in the Clippers to be able to pull this off? You had to have some concerns, and I definitely did. But hey, at the end of the day, they came they came together as a team and got the job done. So kudos to them. Now let's briefly focus on the Dallas Mavericks. I want to give a huge shout out to Luka Doncic. There was nothing he could have done nothing he could have done to carry this team the way he was carrying. He, there was nothing left for him to do. There was nothing more he could have done. Game 7, elimination game. 46 points, 14 assists. There's nothing else he could have done. The man's averaging nearly 35 points in this series. He carried this team. He carried them. He carried them. There was nothing else you could have asked for Luka to do. He did everything he could to carry this team. But there was nothing else more for him to do. There was nothing he could do. At some point, when it's just one guy doing it out there by himself, you need somebody else to help him. Nobody was there to help him. So, yeah, Luka did whatever he, he could, and shout out to him. I'm telling you right now, this guy, this guy is a great player. Um, him... And Tatum, I feel like these two are going to fight. They're going to be in like many... Inter I hope we we one day see them in, going up against each other in the finals. Because I feel like both Luka and Tatum are going to fight to see who's going to be the best player in the league one day. I just feel it. Like, it's going to be an argument between the way Tatum plays and the way Luka plays. Who's the best player in the NBA? And this is seeing into the future. Once you see all these current stars, 
that are here, like these top five players that are here, once they pass on, you see these young guys like Luka and you see um, Tatum, you may get Donovan Mitchell in the mix with John Morant, Trey Young, all these young guys, they're going to be fighting to see who's the best. And I think the two that are going to stand out the most will be Tatum and Luka. So I can't wait to see what happens with these young guys. The NBA is in good hands with these young players because for them to come into the playoffs so young and play this well, oh, that means we're going to have epic battles. We're going to have epic battles in the future. So I cannot wait to see it. But yeah, there was nothing else I could ask from Luka. He was spectacular in this series. You can argue he was the best player in this series. He did everything he could to carry them. There's nothing more you can ask from Luka. It really comes down to his teammates. And this is where the Dallas Mavericks need to make some moves in the offseason. They have to get Luka another star. Tim Hardaway Jr., he's nice. He's a really good player. And in this series, he's been coming along with Luka for the most part. But he's not a star. He's not a star. And he's not enough to be able to help Luka overcome the Western Conference. Poor Zingas. I'm highly disappointed in you. I'm highly disappointed. I expected more from you. Luca's out there dropping 40 plus points in games only for you to drop 15 points, 14 points, 16 points, nine points in one game. Like you were supposed to be the co-star here. You were supposed to be that second guy that the Mavericks can rely on when the opponents were putting pressure on Luca and double and triple teaming him. You were supposed to be that guy. I expected more from you and you disappointed. You have just shown everybody that you're not a number two. You're a number three. You're a really good number three, but you're not a number two. And it's fine to be a number three. Problem is you're getting number two money. Actually, you're getting number one money because you're, you're the highest paid player on the team. Yet you performed like this. You're not a number two. You're a number three. And it's fine to be a number three. It's cool. You know, it's, not everyone's meant to be that second coast, that co-star or that superstar. It's fine to be a number three. But in order for the, the Mavericks to get to what they want to get to, which is ultimately a championship, you need to have a number two on that team. So Dallas, go out and get a second star to put on this team alongside Luka. Because I can make a solid argument. Had they had another star in this series to pair alongside Luka, the Dallas Mavericks would have advanced. They would have beaten the Clippers in five or six games. I can thoroughly say that. I truly believe that. Because with the way Luke was playing, all he needed was a star, somebody else to come with him, to be a consistent 20 to 25 point scorer a game. If you would have given him that second star, that, that not, not even just about scoring, but can actually find his spot, be able to score the basketball without Luca's help. Because the fact of the matter is, this team is Luca centric. They cannot operate without Luca. If Luka's off the court, they struggle to generate points on offense. They can't do anything. Nobody can create their own shot on this team other than Luka. Consistently, no one can do that. So when Luka comes back on the court, either he has to score the ball or he has to directly set up these players in order for them to hit their shots. That's the only way they're going to get they're going to get points on offense. So you, you need a second star that has the ability to create his own he just has to be have the ability to create his own shot and score. He has to have the ability to score, create his own shot, and in some cases, set up his teammates. So you can take that pressure off Luka. Because if you have that second star, Luka doesn't have to deal with double and triple teams every time he touches the basketball. You need somebody else to come alongside Luka. He needs that co-star. If Dallas can get Luka, a co-star, I'm telling you the Mavericks next year could be a very dangerous team. Because this man, Luka, he's arrived. If you didn't believe it last year, you have to believe it this year. Luca is a superstar. He is a superstar. No, not a superstar in the making. He is a legit superstar. And he played like it throughout the season. And he certainly played like it against the Clippers. So Dallas, you have to make moves to get this man a second star. It's fine if you want to keep Porzingis. He's a good number three, but he cannot be your number two. Because if you want to get to a, a finals and win a championship, you need to have a number two to go alongside Luka. Because if you don't, you're going to get you're going to be put in a situation like this where Luka has to do everything. And eventually, that's going to wear him down. Especially if you're trying to go on a run. Can you imagine if the Mavericks would have made it out of the series? Do you, do you honestly believe that Luka could just continue to play like this and deal with double and triple teams and have to carry this team all the way through without getting exhausted? 
that's dangerous, man. It, it's going to wear and tear him down. So you need to get another star to pair up with Luka. But yeah, other than that, man, Dallas, you played a hell of a series. You went up. Well, mostly Luka, you played a hell of a series. You took on Kawhi Leonard and Paul George. You took that challenge on. And for the most part, you outperformed them. You really did. In, in plenty of times throughout the series, you outperformed them. Now, between you and Kawhi, overall, I feel like you had the better overall performance. But Kawhi was not that far ahead. The only difference is Kawhi had that, you know, the support that actually showed up for him in time. He has that co-star on Paul George. But overall, he has guys that showed up. And they definitely showed up tonight. He has a Reggie Jackson. He has a Marcus Morris. So, like, you had guys that, that showed up tonight. Had Luka had some support, maybe we're talking about something different. Maybe we're not. Who knows? I just feel that in order for the Mavericks to get to where they want to get to, they need to give Luka a co-star. But it is what it is. At the end of the day, there can only be one winner. It was a great game. I'm happy for the Clippers. They managed to prove all of us wrong after being down 0-2. No one expected them to come here and do what they did, but they managed to pull it off. They, they overcame an 0-2 deficit. Found a way to win in game six, thanks to Kawhi Leonard looking like the best player on the planet, offensively and defensively in that game six. And then game seven, the team as a whole showed up. It wasn't just Kawhi Leonard doing his thing. That team as a whole showed up. Kawhi set the tone in the first quarter with his 13 points, and then the team just started to continue to do what they were doing, especially in that, that second half. It was like Kawhi had 13 in the first. Paul George set the tone in the second quarter with, I believe, 11 points. And then in the second half, the team just took off. And throughout the fourth quarter, they kept maintaining that level of play. And you have some clutch baskets from Morris and Reggie Jackson. So credit to the entire Clippers team for getting the job done. They did what they needed to do. They managed to win the game. They're moving on to the second round. And they better be prepared for the Utah Jazz because that is a team that's top five in defensive rating and three-point shooting. Prepare for that team. That's going to be a tough matchup. As for the Mavericks, you played a great series. Mostly Luka played a great series. The best of luck to you guys. Hopefully you can get Luka another star. And I can't wait to see you guys back in the playoffs next year. With that being said, that's all I got. And I'm out of here, man. Peace.